Here we go, guys. Welcome to DG360, by the way. Level cap gaming. Fairly new to Star Citizen. And now he's played long enough to make a video entitled, Is Star Citizen Making a Mistake? Let's watch and let's see what he thinks may possibly be a mistake. Is Star Citizen neglecting one of the most important aspects of its development as a project? By giving us complimentary sexual favors for at least donating uh, a couple hundred dollars, two, three hundred dollars, sexual favors, they're needed. It has become so big and complex, it's hard to know exactly when things are going to be released or why certain aspects are being prioritized over others. And with the somewhat open development process for the game, feature prioritization has been one of the more debated topics among fans. Everyone- This drives me insane. Like all this, 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 like I get so upset when I watch videos like this, man. Oh my God. I talked about this last night, man. Star Citizen is trying to encapsulate all types of gameplay. It's trying to be an experience. <sighs> How many times have I said that? It's trying to give us an experience that we've not had in gaming, right? It's at least what it's trying to do. And it's evidenced by the fact that there's $500 million of revenue by people who are actually playing the game or interested in playing it, right? It, it, the scope of what it is trying to accomplish is vast, right? So when I start hearing like timelines and roadmaps, it's important to keep Cod Imperium accountable. Yes, they're, they're accountable every single day because they are transparent. They're accountable by me. They're accountable by you. They're accountable by other content creators, right? And our opinions upon the progress and what's happening with it. But motherfuckers, it's going to get done when it gets done. It just drives me insane. <laughs> like you have a thousand people working on this in a business sense, in the real world with Cloud Imperium being a business that has employees that they pay weekly, bi-weekly, however they're paying them. They're not going to have these guys sitting on their thumbs. I mean, some people like that and that no, no offense to people that like sitting on their thumbs. I should try it. I might like it, but they're not. They are not sitting on their thumbs. They're getting paid, right, to do actual real work. How long is it going to take? I don't know. It's, it just reminds me. <laughs> it does. It, I said this last night. It reminds me of, like, when the kids are in the backseat going, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? It's like it's an immature question. <laughs> I feel like it's an immature question. And why do I say that? Is it that, is it that I'm not keeping Cloud Imperium accountable? It is. And you know how I keep Cloud Imperium accountable? I keep them accountable by seeing how the health of the financials are doing. Because if they're healthy financially, shit's getting done. If they're not healthy financially, shit's going to fall apart and the project won't survive another day. And that's why I was always looking at the P&Ls. That's why I'm always looking to see how they're doing financially, health-wise. Because it is a pillar behind what's going to happen with the entire project. One <laughs> wants the things that are most important to them to be finished and added to the game as quickly as possible. Whether you want more mining, delivery, multi-crew, cargo hauling, bounty hunting, PvP events, base building, data running, or any of the other activities to be added it's and refined to the game, there's only so much that the dev team can do at once. Yes. And for anyone not familiar with the complexities and debates about Star Citizen's development, well, the Cliff Notes version is that there is a... Listen, uh, on the on the other side of the pond, I take more credence in those numbers, Starlet, because it's a public it's it's public reporting, right? On this side of the pond, they didn't have to report their numbers in the states at all. They don't have to because they're a private company. So the so number one, the fact that they decided to, I think primarily, and I don't mean to toot my own horn here, but I was vigorously back in 2015, 2016, talking about how those financials need to be revealed to us. And I want to say in small part, it was because of us that you're seeing the numbers being publicly posted on their site. So then the counter argument can be, well, DG, they could be posting false numbers on their own website, which is really probably not the smartest thing to do because then they're legally bound by reporting numbers on their site that may be false and they could be sued for that. So I would think that the numbers that they're posting on their site 
are legit on the state side of things. So now, <clears throat> let me conclude my argument here. Now that we know, in, in terms of you know how I set this up, that this narrative, I could be wrong, but the numbers are real, okay? So we, we can look at the numbers and we can see what has happened in the past, uh, loss after loss after loss. And I was railing on them for reporting a profit. Why is reporting a profit important as a business financially, health-wise, in order to continue as a business and to and continue having investment? Uh, to continue, you, you have to be healthy financially. You will be uncreditworthy. Banks will not touch you if you start to just continually report <clears throat> negative numbers on your PL over and over and over again. You will lose faith in those that are investing in you, period. Okay. That's just how it is. Now, how does that reflect into progress? How does that reflect into the actual work being done? Okay. A lot of the money and cash that is being put into this project is us primarily. We got a, you got the callers, you got a couple private, you got a couple VCs. Uh, we talked to Bucha about, you know, the venture capitalist side of things and that money, uh, how they started. That's a good interview. Check it out on the channel. But that money or lack thereof affects the, 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 the production, the overall production. That money equals the amount of money they're pushing or a portion of that, how much they're pushing into their workforce. And, and, and not always is it efficient, right? Not always is that going to be an efficient or effective uh, way to measure. But for me, in terms of the information available, I take those numbers and I equate it to how much production is happening based upon how much money they're devoting to putting into the developers, into the work that needs to be done. If they're working on a, on a, on a net positive basis, I know that they've got the cash to throw at a problem. Now, is, it, is that always going to solve everything? No. Throwing cash at a fucking problem isn't just going to solve it. it. It will help because even the dumbest people that can't manage things correctly, if they have enough cash, they can just fucking pour cash on the thing and eventually something might get done. It's a better or stronger position to be in financially as a company to have that cash being dumped on even if it's not being effectively managed, okay? Because there's just so fucking much of it. Um. But that is not always the answer to effectiveness, okay? That money equates in my mind, and again, this is just from my experience, that money being reported in my mind, now that they're net positive, they're in a stronger position. They're in a stronger position as a company to do what they want with that extra cash. And I feel that if you're in a net positive position, you're in a much healthier position to get more shit done than if you're in a net negative position. My, my opinion. Massive team of over 700 active developers working on Star Citizen, yet the project is somewhat divided with the single player standalone experience, AKA Squadron 42, getting the majority of the development focus right now, and the multiplayer persistent universe, AKA the PU, getting less attention. The single player design in progress is also more closed off, so the bulk of the work being done with it is difficult to grasp for players who are ultimately funding the game largely for the multiplayer experience. And in addition to that, due to the ship selling revenue model for the game, there's also a lot of ships designed and released into the universe that still don't have a lot of functionality or purpose. So instead of building the game from the bottom up, it's kind of become a weird hybrid of bottom up and top down design, which has inevitably led to a lot of redesign as they figure out how the game should ultimately function. And as a fan of the project, it's been a lot of fun to watch the development process, but the roller coaster of setbacks or shifting focus away from areas that I care about has been difficult to stomach at times. For example, right now I'm patiently awaiting the next major patch to roll out, which will bring all these cool new features that may usher in the next era of Star Citizen's multiplayer universe. Yet so much of what's currently already in the verse is buggy, broken, or scheduled for a complete overhaul, and that can make playing in the current persistent universe a very frustrating experience and certainly uninviting for new players. Now on one hand the game is in an alpha, so signing up to play an alpha goes hand in hand with having an extremely buggy, unreliable experience. On the other hand though, the persistent universe is so close to being a fun sandbox that can start appealing to a larger group of gamers that it feels like it's 
worth making that push to get the PU to a more playable state as soon as possible. A vertical slice of the persistent universe, if you will. In gaming development terminology, a vertical slice is a section of a game built as far to completion as possible before the rest of the project for the purpose of testing gameplay and figuring out challenges and hurdles to speed up the rest of the development process. Stanton, the single system currently in Star Citizen, is kind of that, but it's also extremely far from being able to replicate Replicate bigger gameplay loops and player interactions that it's not really serving the much bigger purpose that it could be about learning what is and isn't fun with the bigger gameplay loops. Now, of course, the developers are learning a lot from Stan. This is where everybody wants that force fed fucking content, that spoon fed content. You know, a lot of the fun is actually from player to player interaction, not just player versus player, but player interaction being in an MMO. I know it's not an MMO yet. Um, but like we recently did raise player cap, <clears throat> uh, Benoit Bessager is doing work in terms of server meshing, in terms of persistence, uh, that is happening at turbulent. It's not a proper MMO yet. Right. So, you know, bear in mind, I understand that when I say this is what we're looking for in MMOs is, is a sandbox where there is player interaction that in itself is a game loop players people that play the game running into them in the game that's that's a game loop a lot of that is shown here on dg360 you can see a lot of content creators having a lot of fun with that game loop some in an mmo say that's really all they need now it's it's buggy it's still messy there's still bullshit happening i can't stand the physics uh, <laughs> but people are still having fun in this environment and the player to player interaction that they're having keeps them tied down, keeps them logging back in. That's that player retention. Into that any is a persistent game loop. universe, but still, it seems like pretty much every element of gameplay balance is so far from completion that there isn't much else we can learn about what does and doesn't work within Star Citizen. Leaving the game and still a very much theoretical experience. I constantly find myself deep in conversation with other fans talking about what the game will be like once features and gameplay loops are finally implemented or driven to their complete state. So far, by the way, remember when we didn't have planetary landing, right? Remember we didn't we didn't have meta gameplay. Remember when we were not able to do any of what we we're seeing here? You guys happen to remember that? You know, you know what got us here? Patience. When I hear videos like this again, it's it's nonsensical to me. Like I can't, I don't think I can get through the video, and, and I'm going to tell you why. Are we there yet? 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 Like that's all I hear when I watch videos like this. <laughs> I feel like there's just tons of people that don't understand what this game's trying to do. And they get mad at you when you say that. <laughs> Nobody takes the time out to remember how far we've come. Nobody. It's like on to the next one, on to the next one, on to the next one. No appreciation to these developers that sit there crazy amounts of hours to push out what it is that they're pushing out. I couldn't imagine being a developer for Cloud Imperium having to deal with this bullshit. I would I I have a hard enough time as a content creator watching this shit. I have a hard enough time as a content creator digesting any of this right now. Because all I hear when I watch videos like this is are we there yet? 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 It's infuriating. <laughs> it's fucking infuriating to me. I mean, it will get done when it gets done. Sit the fuck down and be patient. What are you going to do about it sitting here other than buying more things? If you're mad at the project, don't buy, don't pledge anymore, right? If you're upset that the progress is so slow, don't fucking spend anymore and go play something else, motherfuckers. Like, I, I literally feel like this when I watch videos like this. Take a big, Take step, a big back step back and literally fuck your own face. I, I do. I can't stand this type of content. I can't stand this type of content. 
And it drives me crazy. No offense against Level Cap. Level Cap's, you know, doing the best that he can. Starlet uh, talking about No Man's Sky just revealed something to me. I'm probably going to jump in NMS and check it out. Uh, you know, there, there was something there that she talked about a community hub that I wasn't even aware of where people can meet and have like MMO experiences, which I'm all about. And so like, because that gameplay seemed to open up an NMS and the fact that I love Sean and what he's done, uh, with, with, uh, with NMS, uh, man, he really came through. He really came through. I respect the shit out of that dude. Um, he there's a guy who had to go through the fucking ringer and come out the other side and wow he was chewed up nobody thought he was coming back and the motherfucker stuck to the project i respect the shit out of him dude for doing what he did but like i can't imagine being a developer for 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 cloud imperium like having to fucking deal with are we there yet are we there yet that would drive me insane that would drive me insane Far my biggest takeaway from my time in Stanton is that Star Citizen is fun to explore. The yes. game is beautiful and flying and landing massive spaceships is really fun and immersive. And that in itself is worth a lot as it shows the scope, freedom and beauty of the game will be a major attractor for gamers. Sure, but as Toronto. many gamers know, what makes a good game is beneath the surface. The meta, the gameplay loops, the learning curve, Jump the narrative, up. the depth, and the co-op and PvP interactions. Those things will ultimately determine whether or not Star Citizen He's is right. actually a fun experience that yep. appeals to a He's larger right. group of gamers. And I mean, like, literally the AI is so fucking stupid. I'm, so, I'm really tired of the AI. You know, I, I need to see AI improve majorly, right? But, like, there's still co-op experiences. There's still player-to-player -player interaction experiences in there that people like who like that type of gameplay. And I think what you're hearing from people that like that type of gameplay is that it is fun right now. And people who don't like that gameplay, they're like, no, it, it isn't, <laughs> you know? And in my opinion, CIG should be trying to figure out the core gameplay loops as quickly as possible. <laughs> the sooner they Krona says, are we there yet? Krona had serious questions. Krona says, uh, number one, are we there yet? And number two, not using glasses. I'm not. I should be saving my eyesight. I should be saving my eyesight. You're right. You're right. I probably have indentations in my forehead. Yes, I do. Look, I have indentations. Imperfect forehead. God damn it. I have an imperfect forehead, Pepe. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. I got to save my eyesight. I got a, I got a doctor's appointment with a, with an optometrist here in about an hour and a half. We got to get moving. We can complete the listen, design. Listen, we got to get moving. Like, listen, I, I respect that he's trying to take this from all angles, but we've all been here. Like the people that have been in star citizen, we've all been here. Like I, I, I understand this content for newer people to the project. I understand that he's pulling in a lot of people that are part of his audience that have never played star citizen. So I'm taking this kind of content with a grain of salt, but the people who have been in star citizen forever, we've seen this video 15 times by 15 different people. Hell, I was probably one of them back in 2015, 2016. I probably was one of the people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Let's, let's get out of here.